Well, hello there, a p 2 students, and welcome back. In this video, we will explore the cardiac conduction system and see how it regulates heart rate. Each cardiac muscle cell has the ability to depolarize and contract on its own, and the heart does not need neurons to stimulate it to contract. As a matter of fact, if all the nerves to the heart were cut, it would still function. These myocytes have been observed to contract on their own with no outside influence, and each cell develops its own rhythm depending on the environmental conditions. If you had a group of myocytes separated out from each other in a petri dish and you observed them, they would each beat to their own rhythm, independent of each other. But if you brought them close enough together where they touched, they would quickly synchronize and start to beat together. And this is due to the gap junctions that form in the adjoining cell membranes. Left on their own, these cells would beat about 20 to 30 times a minute. But we know that that's not a fast enough rate to sustain life. And the heart is not just two or three cells working together, but a few million. And there are parts of the heart that need to contract first, before the rest of the heart. So what is it that coordinates this great orchestra of contraction into a beautiful functional symphony? That would be the electrical conduction system. The cells of the electrical conduction system are specialized non-contractile cardiac cells that are ever depolarizing. These cells are on a continual creep up toward threshold which when reached produces an action potential. What allows these cells to override the innate beat of the myocytes is that these cells fire more rapidly and the most rapidly firing cells will set the pace. In a normal heart, those cells are located in the sinoatrial node, and the SA node has a rhythm of 100 beats per minute. Once the SA node fires, a wave of depolarization sweeps across the atria, prompting these myocytes to contract in unison. The impulse reaches another group of conductive cells called the atrioventricular node. Here, the impulse is delayed by approximately 0.1 seconds to allow the atria to contract first before the ventricles are flooded with a wave of depolarization. The AV node has its own intrinsic rhythm of approximately 50 beats per minute, and if it need be, the AV node could take over as the pacemaker of the heart. Once the AV node fires, things move very quickly from here. The electrical impulse travels through the rest of the conduction system and we will name the various parts of that system now. Within the superior aspect of the interventricular septum is the atrioventricular bundle, also known as the bundle of Hiss. The bundle then branches into what we call the bundle branches. And the bundle branches travel down to the apex of the heart, giving off smaller branches called the subendocardial conducting network, or Purkinje fibers. And it's these fibers that are in contact with the cardiac myocytes. Let's now relate the events of the conduction system with what we see on an ECG. First of all, looking at the key, we see that the wave of depolarization within the atria and or the ventricles is going to be colored in red, and the wave of repolarization will be colored in green. In box one, we'll have the SA node firing, initiating depolarization of the atria. And the atrial depolarization will show up on the ECG as the P wave. Once the atria are depolarized in box number two, the atria will contract. And pretty quickly after that, the atria will begin to repolarize, as you can see in box three. In the meantime, the ventricles have depolarized, and the wave of depolarization is being shown here as traveling downward and toward the left. This wave of depolarization is following the direction of the conduction system from the AV node to the bundle, from the bundle to the bundle branches, and from the bundle branches to the Purkinje fibers. This movement of the electrical impulse is picked up on the ECG as a QRS wave. And in box four, we begin to see the wave of ventricular repolarization, which goes in the opposite direction to the depolarization. And so the first cardiac myocytes to depolarize, which are usually the ones in the papillary muscles, will be the last to repolarize. And this wave of activity is picked up on the ECG as the T wave. So that's your introduction to the conduction system. Now I mentioned a couple of things at the beginning of this video that I want to bring up again, and then I will leave you with a question. 
I mentioned that the intrinsic rhythm of the SA node is around 100 beats per minute. And the SA node is the pacemaker of the heart, and we know that the normal resting heart rate is around 75. So what can explain these seemingly contradictory statements? <laughs>